Well, the day has finally come. We're here with Bruce Meyer. Bruce uh, has one of the greatest car collections on the planet and one of the greatest settings ever. I won't give you the exact location, but uh, we're somewhere on the nice side of the... Well, there's a high school that a bunch of kids went to that they Fox did a show about, somewhere near there. Uh, Bruce has been generous <laughs> enough to open up his super garage for us. And you work out of this building as well, right? I do, yeah. I started my business here in 1968. And this, I'm told, was one of the first parking structures ever built? Yeah, in Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. Oh, oh you just gave oh, it away. I know, I'm going to do it. <laughs> He's got security. Uh, the stuff that's here is unbelievable. We'll try to get to some of it. You'll at least, you should definitely go to adamcrawl.com and go to acecarcast.com to take a look at what is here. And it's one of these things where uh, there, I've been seeing bigger car collections, but for the 18 or 20 pieces you have here in the automotive world and the 12 or 15 motorcycles you have here, nothing more significant in, in my mind. Yeah, we walked in, we're like, you know, it's not the biggest collection, but it's probably the coolest collection we've ever seen before, and which is, yeah. I think, I'm sure if we went to his house, we could dig up a few more cars <laughs> as well. Yeah. But uh, all right, so we'll, we'll start at the start, and we'll go through as much as we can get through. And again, Bruce, thanks for opening it's your doors very visual and your show. heart. Very Relax. visual well, show, so definitely check you. out the... Uh, well, website. and Adam is a real enthusiast. You know, when you That's have tells me. stuff, you like to share it with people that kind of understand it. And I mean, he... I'm, I'm going to learn today about what I have from Adam because <laughs> you, have, you have a depth of knowledge. No, but it's fun. Anyways, I don't see any Dotsons here. The bottom line is it's fun to share it with, 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 with you. Guys who love it. Guys who yes. love it. Yeah. All right, let's do it. This is a 1962 Cobra, serial number one, CSX 2001. When Carroll Shelby put the Cobra program together, it was the first one, CSX 2000, was his prototype. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he wasn't even sure that it was gonna, the whole program was going to fly. So CSX 2000, Carroll Shelby Experimental. That's, that's the blue one that that's they have, the, the blue prototype one. of the unrestored interior that they just, that Pre he just leaves. Precisely. Okay. Right. Yeah, and so that's that. the one he painted multicolors, took around to the magazines, exposed it just to see if if there was interest. Well, there was interest. Painting it multicolors was to make them think he had more than one car for those. Right, so different magazines can home. get a yellow version, a blue version. Right, right. right. So sure. then this car is... This is production number one. This is CSX 2000. So that was a prototype, basically. Yeah, the, the first one was his prototype. This is right. his first production car. This mm -hmm. was built in 62. Now, when, I mean, I don't know how well you know Shelby or your group knows Shelby, but I mean, he was, he, he, he you know, he's been called everything, but one of the things he was is very clever, okay? Yes. And um, uh, when he sold the program, he didn't have a garage. He built the first car in Dean Moon's hot rod shop. Mm -hmm. So along comes the production, and he had nowhere to put him. So Ed Hugus, who mm -hmm. was an old and dear friend of his, um, Lamont veteran, big time guy back in Pittsburgh, he took the first probably 50 cars. So in other words, when they first started coming over, they went to Ed Hugus' shop. He did all the early When they first came over from England. From England, right. right. They came over without engines right. and without transmissions, but everything else complete. So they'd put the engine and transmission in and, and send it off, paint it. So when they go from Hugus' place to Venice? Well, so the first few cars went to Ed Hugus'. Obviously, this is one of the first few. This is the first one. Serial number two came out here, and that became the first race car. CSX 2002 uh, was the first race car. And then I don't, can't tell you, you know, like a whole numerology of where they all went. But uh, the first ones, which a lot of people don't realize, went to Ed Hugas. He was the East Coast distributor. He took it to the New York Auto Show and the different East Coast Auto Shows. He took this one, actually, because this was the first one. So it was purchased by a fellow named Lloyd Kasner. Lloyd Lucky Kasner, and he had a, a race team called Camarade, and he was a very close friend of Shelby's, because Lloyd Kasner really ran the Maserati race team, and Shelby raced for Maserati, so he bought this car, kind of as a favor to Shelby, and then shipped it to race at Le Mans. He shipped it out of here in 63. Wow. They did, they, they did the Le Mans trials in 64, 
Shelby came out with his FIA car, which was a 289 right. rack so and pinion, much, much more improved version. This would have had a 260 in it then, right? And, and Wurman sector steering right. and thin hips, you know. It, was, it looked completely different than this. Right, so, and a leaf spring front end. Yeah, too, this, right. is all, this is all like that. That right. didn't change till the big block. Right. But this car then uh, was sent to Ford Racing of Europe well, let me just take a step back. So Lloyd Kasner got a Frenchman, the Jean-Louis Vincent, to partner with him. They were going to race at Le Mans. The car was not competitive because it, it wasn't updated like all the new Shelbys. So they updated this one. I, I, the reason I'm saying this is because this doesn't look like Cobra number no. 1, but it is Cobra number no. 1 because they put a 289 in it, changed it to rack and pinion steering, you know, bulged the fenders. So this car is really an FIA car and built this, in Europe. This car raced at Le Mans in 60. Four, it actually oh, went 60. through the trials. They, yeah. they didn't actually race it because they were so outclassed in 64. So they mm -hmm. did the modifications in 63 and 4. Mm -hmm. And then the car raced, the, the only Cobra to race in the Tour de France, which was at the time, some people think as important as Le Mans. I think Le Mans is the, the main event. But this was the only Cobra to race at Le Mans. And then it raced at multi races all throughout Europe in 64, 65, and 66, very successfully. And then this one here, the 250-61 right. Ferrari. Right, exactly. This is I a, love. This is, this is probably the most important car I have. This is what they call a Comp 61, mm -hmm. which was basically a factory hot rod. This was the car they built before the GTO. So this has a lot of GTO technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, when and they ran the GTOs at Laguna Seca two years ago, one of these, or two of these, or a handful of these were out on the track in the all right. GTO race. And I was like, hey man, what's that $6 million car doing in with expensive cars? <laughs> Come on, it's stinking up the track. <laughs> yeah, what the heck, yeah. litter, litter. You know, but it, 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 this car won Le Mans in 61. And when I say won Le Mans, it won its class. It came right. in third overall behind two prototypes. This car was a rock star in the day. This car, this very car brought the championship of makes to Ferrari in 61. It won first overall at Monza, set, at Monza second overall at Spa, third overall and first in class at, at Le Mans. I mean, and yeah. on and on. This car is, yeah. is the most it's, winning short wheelbase See, Adam, in the he doesn't world. have any backup cars in his collection. <laughs> and it's a left-hand uh, driver. Right, two Frenchmen, cool. Noble and Guichet, mm -hmm. drove the car. And they were magic. They went on to racing GTOs. They won the class with GTOs. I mean, um, these guys were spectacular. Is this racers. a three liter V12? Uh huh. Yep, this is a 250. And it's probably got the six down draft Webers, and it's probably good for about 300 horse. Well, this actually has three big four barrels. Oh, really? Yeah, very wow. large carburetors Jeez. on the car. So this is, um, you know, this is a little, the, 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 seat, the, the, the four down, the, the six down draft Webers came on the on the 275s in the GTOs, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. when they started. Mm -hmm. But in early like this, they didn't have six. They had they had uh, two and three car. They had one and three carburetor manifolds. But in this one, is, but on the short wheelbase, they were all three carburetor. But on the on the Comp 61, they call it a CFAC, which is a Italian name for hot rod, because mm -hmm. it's a very custom built car. And we've driven all these cars. I drove this car from Budapest to Prague. The Cobra. The Cobra. <laughs> and this year, we just drove it on the Colorado Grand, a thousand miles through Colorado. Wow. This car, we've done the Colorado Grand in. That car. The Ferrari the and the Corvette, because some of them are listening now, and some of them are watching this video. But explain the windshield on the Ferrari. You'll have to check out the acecarcast.com. Sure. You'll see the Ferrari. There's this, this glass windshield on the hood. And we were looking at it earlier, look, thinking, well, it's not a Roadster. You're not with a, with a mini windshield. So yeah. what's the... It's, a, it's the, really a the bug and rock deflector. So, mm -hmm. so and it really works. Windshield. And this is, you know, it's perspex. It's, it's, but it's an endurance racing thing, right? I mean, it's like yeah. if you're going to be driving for that kind of time, you're right. going to get hit by rocks and bugs. Bugs and, and litter and oil right, and, and right. everything. And this really works because when we had this on the Colorado Grand, I hit a swarm of butterflies, and, and it just splatted that side of my windshield, uh -huh. and, and I was completely clear. This thing really works. The, yeah. other, the other thing people ask about is why is there only one shield on the exhaust? I don't know if you saw that. Oh, we didn't look in the back. 
All right. And people say, why is that? Well, the reason is because this is the side, side of the pit. Well, this is the side they pit on and the side right. the fuel comes in. Right. And, you know, things are done in a big hurry in a race and the fuel sure. pours over here. Yeah. Right. And they have had fires where the fuel runs over the exhaust. Yeah. How many wow. pit crew members did they set on fire before they decided to put a shield on? Yeah, there? I guess they just had. <laughs> well, the good news is uh, many of them were smoking during the pit yeah. stop, so yeah. the shield. <laughs> There's a crew who stand there with a cigarette, put uh, the superfluous and unnecessary. Change of the wheels. Um, so we, when you're at speed, by the way, does this thing start to flex? No, when you, no, do you no, see not it that move fast. at all? You're not going that fast. I mean, this has a top speed of 160. Yeah, With but even Lamar at 100, here. it seems like no. that would... Oh, no. Never. Okay. never the uh, the uh, next one, then, is uh, a it's Corvette. A Corvette, 1960. 1960. Yeah. yeah, they ran a lot of these at Le Mans that people don't really think about back in the, back in the day. Well, this particular car in 1960 was... In that fact, have a look at that picture, because that's the car over there. It was the first Corvette to run at Le Mans. 1960. Before that, they never ran. Of course, they didn't mm -hmm. have much in the way of cars. But this was uh, Briggs Cunningham's. He, he, he campaigned three cars, and they won their class. And uh, it's just a fun car. I've raced this at Goodwood. Uh, I've taken it all over the country. Oh, really? Goodwood? Yeah. yeah. I, I, like, uh, I always liked the Gen 1 style of Corvettes. It was among my favorite. But even on this, this race car, the hood pins are a trick. Those things are kind of this they're car, Ferrari. Kind of neat, you know, that's, they're just that's kind of a Italian. Neat. That's very Ferrari, very Italian. Right. Exactly, very Italian. This car is actually quite trick. Even though it's a completely stock chassis, it has aircraft seats in it, roll bar, you know, the hood, you know, cooling, yeah, fins, bug again, a deflector, um, the fuel uh, door is taken off because it has a big center fueling. Yeah, um, it has Halibrand wheels. The bumper, of course, is taken off. Light covers just to, to protect it from rocks and so forth in the daytime. The so uh, a race car with chrome on the front. You don't see yeah. that anymore. Just no more not yeah. enough chrome the on race cars anymore. Unbelievable. This won Le Mans in 79. This was an overall winner. And this is maybe in the last 60 years the only real production car to win Overall. Overall at Le Mans. Yeah, what people don't realize is you're racing, you know, people do the, we won at Le Mans, and they pause and they go, well, we won our class. Yeah. And then for some reason, it's always third overall. Right. Yeah. We won the time I don't know trial. why, but, but it's third overall. But, but and, and because they have the, the modified stuff, that, that, the prototype stuff that is just cleaning up, and now you'll see it. And especially see the crazy diesel-powered mm -hmm. Peugeots or or the uh, Audis or whatever they look. They don't look like cars. Right. But back then they had those as well. So it's pretty rare, and it's never going to happen again. I don't think that a I production no. car could win overall. No. At at Le Mans, and so this may be about it. I think it's real safe to say this is is it. Right, and then Porsche is, files. This is the 50th anniversary of the 911, so it's a you know it's a it's a big deal this car. So this the story on this car was, it was run by the Whittingtons, mm -hmm. and they were notorious, you know, had trouble with the law. Let me just say that, and, and, <laughs> and I guess they imported drugs. You know mm -hmm. how that works. But anyway, so they got rid of the car in '80 or '81. They donated it to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum. <laughs> so this car has been 30 years in the basement of the Speedway Museum. So oh, really? we just pulled it out. Bruce Canapa did a, you know, <laughs> cosmetic, mechanical. What's he know about 935? You know, what a hack. He, he must have been on the hack. internet researching stuff every night. Yeah, he called actually. Guy has like, what do you know about 935? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, well, he called Adam, right? Does yeah. this back thingy him. come off or is it is it hinged? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I, I'm familiar with him and his 935s because I could see it coming up on me <laughs> when I was driving my 280ZX at uh, Laguna yeah. Seca at about 100 miles an hour faster than yeah, I Yeah, he only had just, three times the horsepower. It's just fine. Buzzing, it's fine. Just <laughs> buzzing by. Well, if so, anybody knows the cars, it's Bruce. And, yeah. and so yes. he's, he's been through this car from tip to stern, and we rebuilt the engine. It's ready to race. Um, the tires that are on it are new old stock tires that a friend of mine. Wow! Had. So we we won't we'll take you won't these. won't race on no, these, but, but we will we will run it. You know, wow. with, with a proper set of tires. And and is um, I, I I was looking at the cage inside and trying to figure out if that's aluminum. 
or chromoly or uh, you what know, that is. I think it's an alloy aluminum. It, it seemed like it was aluminum and it seemed, seemed a little light gauge to me for uh, well, the side everything impact. Everything in this car is light gauge. You know? Yeah. I mean, it is one lightweight car. I, 850 horsepower. Wow. Yeah, 240 mile an but, hour. But I kind of feel like the Germans put it in there not for safety, but just to pass tech. They're like, the hell with the driver. Yeah. We can replace that. <laughs> So this thing was the like hot rod four liter or something, or am I putting words in your mind? No, you're you're right in right there. This was they call it Johnny von Neumann's hot rod. <clears throat> it was built with a it was one of two only built with a two and a half liter Grand Prix four cylinder engine. Oh. And then he had it for a year, and they came out with a two and a half liter Testarossa. Excuse mm -hmm. me, the three liter, the V twelve. Yeah, yeah, people forget that. Ferrari had a bunch of four-cylinder race cars that were pretty effective uh, back in the day. Yep. Yeah. Very effective. And so this, so this, for one year it raced with the four-cylinder, mm -hmm. and then Richie Ginther, who is a well-known Grand Prix driver, worked for von Neumann, and in '58, after it was one year old, they ordered from the factory a brand new 250 TR motor, mm -hmm. and they put it in the car. And so this has run all, its, its entire, almost the entire career with, the, with a three liter V12. And that's, that's the way it is right here. And that's the way it is in the picture. <clears throat> you can tell because it has the big hood the scoop huge on scoop. It. And uh, this was the Pearson Brothers Coupe. This car went 150 at, at Bonneville. And it's just a total hot rod icon. The cover of Hot Rod did, Magazine did, in 1950. Did, did this predate the SoCal one? Or yes. Who ripped off who? <laughs> no, no, this definitely, this was the first aggressive coupe. Yeah. Right. The, uh, this was done in, in, in 1949 and raced in 50, just like you see it. Wow. And the SoCal coupe came along in the early 50s. Oh, okay. So it was, you know, it was quite a bit after this. But it's a great, I mean, you know, just, you know, just, you've, got, wow. you've got the battery just right near down the everything. fuel tank. Like, and, wow. Quick change rear range just sitting yeah. back there. It must make a lot of noise. I've ri I had this car at Goodwood, too. Yeah. And I've had great fun. This car has been all coast to coast everywhere. Oh, uh, Goodwood Hill Climb. I'm yeah, guessing. the Hill Climb. Yeah, yeah the historic. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, <laughs> I get the feeling that when they built that the car, that, that, this the, is the, the so cow. all lined up as perfectly oh, as they no. are now. This Maybe is the belly deep. tank. And this, I saw a whole documentary about you finding this thing and digging it out of somebody's loft. Right, I, in I San Pedro, Don it Ferguson. It was literally up in the loft of yeah. this guy's shop, you know, like where you'd see the trusses and the exposed, you know, trusses up there. Kids were using like, it as a fort. It was up there. I think the rats <laughs> were using it as a fort. Well, it's, it's, this is a very significant car. This was a very important belly tank. So it's a P38 belly tank, they call it, or drop That's tank. That's a twin boom. And ones, yeah, right. exactly. And so they that, would. That's the one, by the way. If you saw the Aviator, it's kind of kind of like the one that Leonardo DiCaprio crashed. Like that, that, that was like a prototype. But this was a the P thirty eight was hot because it was like it had the, the the twin booms in the rear and it had the cannons in the front and it was just like a tank killer or something. It was really fast, really cool. Anyway. This was a belly tank, a drop tank from that plane, which extended the range so they could get further out and get to them Nazis. Right. All right, so where, where were we? So <laughs> you just, you, you, you got it right, coming. you got it right. And, and so, you know, after the war, all these young GIs came back with all this newfound technology, you know, sure. it was developed during the war. And they put this car together in 1948. It was on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine in 1948. Alex Exidius had this little SoCal speed shop in Burbank. Alex, great guy, by the way. Right. Such great a sweet guy. guy. And this car is, is uh, the engine is not the original engine it ran with, the original type, but everything else in this car is original. Was I mean, it a flathead? It was a flathead when it ran, but then it was taken out. He ran three flatheads in it, won uh, three records, in, and this was in 52. But the, everything is original. The, the seats, the, the gauges, the seat belts, every stick of the uh, suspension is so all this, original. But this is redone with a patina. No, this is absolutely original. <laughs> this looks like somebody <laughs> yeah, painstakingly yeah. recreated with plus patina. Yeah, no. Like, like it's still, it's coming, it's coming it. apart, you know, here and there, but. No, I, this is this is has never. Well, ever, we'll have to go to Summit and get another one of these. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Once, once you're in this, you can't get out. You Somebody's got to get you out. You know, at Bonneville like, you now, can't even, like, to, to race this car, race to Bonneville, and now you've got to do this. You know, 
uh, uh, 10, 10, 10 seconds, seconds to, to get out. They, yeah, out they set car. you on fire. Yeah, no, and then I, they that's like, right. Try to exactly get right. Yeah, yeah, they say, you're on fire. What do you do? And then they watch every move, you know, shut the fuel, electric, blah, 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 and then yeah. get the heck out. I don't know. On, I mean, this was before safety. No. You couldn't I mean, run you know, it with, you, the, with the canopy. You couldn't run it. Oh, my God. I mean, I can't even imagine being. I mean, I've been I in this car, <laughs> you know, at speed, but it, I was being pulled so and pushed. What did, what did this thing ultimately do? 198. Tom? Wow, that's quick. That yeah. is, I mean, 200 miles an hour. And in, in what year did it? 52. Is in is crazy talk, and especially with zero roll cage and God knows nothing. How much? If this thing this, rolled over, you would be. Finished. Uh, oh, you yeah. never stop yeah. rolling. Yeah, num number right. one. <laughs> just, it was built to. I mean, it was built to never <laughs> stop rolling because the wheels would immediately just come off, and then you'd just be. Like a uh, jelly bean. And jelly bean. Yeah, it would just break apart, off. right? It would just shatter oh, yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah. What does it weigh? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I didn't think it's so. It's an aluminum weigh. tank. They have to put sandbags in, in it to keep it on the floor. It would That's literally right. hover. <laughs> it would be, we'd be underneath it. Very right Jetsons. Now. Very yeah. Jetsons. But yeah, like it rolls, it just breaks apart and your body but flies through the, the air. But the other thing, too, is so no that. aerodynamics other than aerodynamics. Yeah. That's like, right. no, nothing creating any downforce or no. no no fin or anything. No stability. It's just no. ideas, just, just cheat, just cut through the wind as easily as humanly possible. Now, isn't that contrary to what people are trying to do at land speed? Because, you know, the land speed cars are heavy. They're supposed oh, to yeah. be heavy. Well, my Roadster's. 5,000 pounds. Yeah, and this thing weighs nothing, so to go that speed, like, I don't even know how it well, sticks it just, to the it ground. Would, you know, I don't know, but it did. Well, it is an I amazing I love the rear, piece. look at this rear. Yeah. And this just. I'm guessing those are drums in the rear. Yeah, only rear. Oh yeah, only rear, sure. Well, I don't even know why it, why is it even a brakes? Like, why not just have a parachuter? You got to get a shot of this just looking straight from the rear. Jeez. <laughs> and this is just for the, to just for the, the, for the tow push car. Pull, yeah. push, tow. Push, push a car. Uh, so it's just, I mean, just, to, just take a rear look at that thing. Straight rear. Uh, this, oh, I, you know, I was. I love was, these cars. I, I, love, I love the gold wings as well. Um, the, this, the, the black with the red interior, I don't know how you can do much better than that. That combination. And what, what year is this? So one? good. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. And again, if you're listening and not watching, it's a fifty-five SL three hundred, three hundred SL, yeah. all wing mm -hmm. Mercedes. Beautiful, beautiful car. The only, uh, and it's got the pretty rare steel wheels, which are called Rudge. For, right. And uh, it's just so, it's so unbelievable, and so, so far before its time, and not, not just, you know, it's not just the gold wing part and the design. It's like the fuel injected. Slant, you know, four, four, yeah. six cylinder straight six, just slant it over and said, oh, by the way, I, you know, I, I was saying, uh, I did the Tonight Show a few years ago. I pulled in, and you always see what car Jay drove that day. He drives, he cannot drive the same car two times. Like, <laughs> like, like some people are weird, like some e eccentric star who won't wear underpants twice, like I'll throw them out or something, but he does that with cars. And he's wearing, <laughs> he has a different car in there. Every, I've done this night show 20 times, every single time, and he had, the only time, because I always say these cars, I've never seen a beater, like I've never seen a driver, you know, I've seen them done to the nines, and I couldn't imagine, because this car has aluminum body, has a frame, it's almost birdcage Maserati-esque, oh, yeah. when you see these cars taken apart, and mm. then you realize, like, you know, restoring one of those Ferraris is an expensive and timely in endeavor. This is a whole different fall of wax. This yeah. is like an aircraft. It is. To do. He had uh, one with a meatball on it, beater. Um, had never seen a, like a real beater gull wing. Told me he got it for some <laughs> price that would make everyone buy it. Just, oh, I know. Yeah, uh, Jay, I don't even want to know. I, they want to give the stuff car. to Jay. I, I know. Yeah, I, I told him. Car, I told just... him. I know. They see Jay coming, and it's like, oh, the curator in my future. They see a sack of money coming when they see Bruce coming down the street. <laughs> but they see a big fat credit card coming. But Jay, it's like, Jay, here, take, take right. and take my daughter as well. Like, take it all. I know. I just, so, the, so he and and the, so he so he say to him, yeah, straight six fuel injection, two hundred and forty horsepower, and he goes, nah, two two twenty. And I said, I think they're two forty. He said, nah, two twenty. I said, I'm pretty sure it's two forty. And he's like, two twenty. We can go back and forth a while, and then 
when I see him two months later, he goes, I checked it out. <laughs> 240. You said they made one that was 220, though. I, I said I said it was two. Somehow, if there was one, yeah. or maybe he just detuned his yeah. to get down to 220. But it's like he couldn't lose this argument, but he went and pursued it and argued. But this one looks like a complete nut and bolt. Crazy so wait, is this one 220 or 240? <laughs> this is two, probably 250. <laughs> but it, it's interesting because I bought my first old car in six. I bought it in '64. Where's it going? Really? I paid four thousand bucks for it. That was my net worth. That was in '64. Wow. And I and and I had it's good to see you, you know, spend everything you had on the yeah. market. Yeah. Well, in all, in truth, it had a Chevrolet 327 engine in it, and wow. and a fraternity brother of mine still has it today. And wow. I'll tell you what, it is fantastic. It's a lightweight no. engine, goes like heck. Yeah. So he still has that car. I then went off and I bought a Roadster that resembled the one behind us, and then I bought another Gullwing, and I had it for 35 years. And that's the one that's at the Peterson Museum, a red one with tan, because I went through a red tan period where every car had to be red with tan interior. Now this, uh, I must say, the, <laughs> oh, the, I'm not there the black on the red and the green leather interior much more interesting yeah. to yeah. me than the red and tan. The notion that the, 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 the coupes, I mean the convertibles, have, have caught up to the gold wings in yeah. value is weird to me because I always thought and, and to, but stop me if I'm wrong 15 20 years ago these things were twice as much as those things right and you know the uh, Cobras too the big block and small block Cobras you know the big block was usually almost twice a small block yeah. right and and these were absolutely correct these were twice the value of a Roadster and now they're the I, the going is still a little more but not, not significant but, but what, there was a huge gap yeah what, not anymore. Just, what is Production-wise, the only thing that makes sense to me is that they made fewer of these. It's the roadsters. Of the roadsters. I don't think a whole lot. I mean, you know, I should know what the number is. I want to say they made like 1,500 of each. I mean, it was, it was hmm. a, a large it's weird, because to me, the gold wing is what the car is. <clears throat> yeah. This is a great car, mm -hmm. but if you put this and you put one of the 55,000 190s, Next to it, meaning the cheaper little brother of this car, my wife would think that my, my wife would announce they're both cute. That's, that's cute that. is the word. <laughs> that. uh, let's go look at the car you want 200 miles an hour in. That right. is five. You say five thousand pounds? Well, forty-five hundred and something. I mean, it's it's close to five thousand pounds. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> but being a California hot rodder my whole life. I just, you know, I always wanted to go 200 in an open car. I went 222 in that Camaro, mm -hmm. but it was closed, you know. But I wanted to go 200 in a Roadster. And uh, have you been to Bonneville? No. Oh, Adam. I it's, gotta go it's, to Bonneville. It's required. It is <laughs> well, the most. Well, then it shall be done. It shall You've be been done. such a poser all these years. You know, <laughs> you should go. Get no, off your ass. Take my 610 down to Bonneville. <laughs> yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, that <laughs> is that is like a place. On Earth that you have never seen before, yeah. you can't even believe it exists. I mean, you know, you're, it's real salt, and it's just far as the, you can see. I mean, and you, you know, some people say you can see the curvature of the Earth. I mean, it is out there. So, um, and at Bonneville, they recycle. Nobody really builds anything new for Bonneville. You know, somebody will run a car like this, and then they'll get tired of it, and they'll sell it to somebody else, and they'll re-up it. Mm -hmm. So, I would say, I would guess that. Three quarters of the cars that run at Bonneville have been running there for 30, 40 years. And just getting upgrades along the way. And that's the case with this car. This car was built by a fellow named Gary Brower and, and uh, Mike Cook. And they built the car, you know, 25 or so years ago. And so I bought the car from Gary's son. Gary passed away. I bought it from his son, Mike, and took it back to Mike Cook. And we completely, you know, we just started over again. We mm -hmm. used the chassis and the body, and then we did everything else new. It had a wet sump engine. We changed it to a dry sump engine. We, you know, put new fire systems on it. New is it a big block Chevy? Or it's a big it? block Chevy injected. We, and we, we really built it to run um, with nitro. Uh, so we, we're running alcohol only. We took it out. We went 204 in it. And then the engine let loose. So I, 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 it has more left in it. Yeah, um, but I'm not sure at age 71 if I have more. If my you family, went you went 200. You went 200. I did, and, and then I went and I went, joined the 200 mile an hour club in the Camaro. So because you know when you go 200, you're not in the club. I don't know if you you know how that works. No. You gotta well, pay people somebody. just no. Yeah, you gotta pay somebody. It's you, like that Walk of Fame. You don't you just get it for being famous. You're not in the 200 club. Oh no, yeah, because anybody. I mean, anybody can go 200. Now, there's the, the 200 mile an hour club is a re, maybe the most 
difficult club to get into. And you have to go 200 and you have to break a land speed record over 200. So in other words, this, they play hard in these, you know, they don't leave a lot on the table. So I broke a record in, a, in the Camaro. I went 222 in that Camaro, but the record I broke was a record that it was long standing at 197 with a small engine because it runs by displacement. There's a lot of classes. But um, so we, we put an engine in that car that we thought could break the record, and we did. Uh, my first run, I did 206, so that broke the record. And if you go 197 and a half, and the record's 197, you're in the club. Okay. You're, 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 you've broken the record, but you've got to go over 200 right, and right. break a record. Right, because uh, you see those guys out there, and they're like, we set the record in a motorcycle that was under 100 cc's, and the guy went yeah. 61 miles an hour, and you're like, pig, whoop, you yeah, know? You and it's like he yeah. owns a record, except for the record was, again, something like a leaf blower sized motor That's and 10-speed right. tires on it. It's like, yeah. So there's a lot of like, rules. You'd be like, I broke the record on a Wednesday for all the ones that are on Wednesday. No, no, it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not that <laughs> It's not that bad, but there but is like... But, but you're right, right Adam. I mean, you, like you say, in a motorcycle class, there's probably... 20 classes, you know, like you say, yeah. 25 cc, 50 cc, 75, and on, you know. saying I was the uh, Intercontinental California WBC cruiserweight champ, you know, it's like, <laughs> if they're building a category for you, then you're not, you're not, yeah. we want pound for pound. We want, yeah. the 200 pound club is the heavyweight. Yeah. Those are the guys, That's and it. so it's it's 200 miles an hour and a record. It's not just 200 miles an hour. Precisely, and then you get a red hat, mm -hmm. and and that's the, the big deal is you know you get the hat because yeah. when you're in the 200 club you get a red hat. So when you're out at Bonneville and you, you see very few, but you see the guys wearing the red hats. Yeah, that's the real deal. So where's your hat? My hat's in the trophy case, <laughs> okay. but I just ordered another one. It arrived yesterday, so I've got, I've got now. I've got a few hats, but I will wear. You'll see me in my red hat. <laughs> this is uh, Clark Gable's. Was it 41? 30? Uh, it's a 1955. Oh. They made 48 of these, world production, and this wow. has the gullwing engine in it, fuel injected, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and it was set about sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars in '55. A gullwing wow. was nine or ten. This was 15, 16, 17, depending on how you had it accessorized. I have luggage for the rear. I have luggage for the trunk. When I say I, this is the way Clark ordered yeah. it. We, have, we really have not restored this. This, wow. this is just yeah, it's, absolutely it's, original. It's back when they would make the uh, luggage to the shape, like, yeah. like with the gold wing, right, like with yeah. certain. When he died, this was in 61. This, you know, his wife was in K, K. Gable, K. Spreckles. And um, she put it away. She put it in storage right uh, upon his wow. death because she was pregnant with John Clark Gable. Wow. So she saved the car for 20 years after his death to see if he wanted it. And, and after 20 years, he decided it was not his kind of car. So I was able to buy it in 1981. So I've had it 31 years. Wow. This looks like one of the many cars I saw sliding sideways around. Uh, yes, it is. It looks identical, but it, this is what they call a semi-lightweight. <laughs> and this mm -hmm. was... Uh, um, built especially for um, uh, Hugh, Hugh Sutherland, who was uh, uh, a Canadian working in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to order a lightweight. This was in 63. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they said, we, you know, they made the lightweights in like 61. And they said, we don't make them. But what we can do is make what they call a semi-lightweight, which is basically all the lightweight, lightweight running gear wide angle head, lightweight hood, which is the, well, I call it a hood, bonnet, whatever. This is sure. aluminum, and you can see all the little specks. But what's, what's weird about this is, I, this, now, I, the whole bonnet, or the whole assembly, comes up in these Jags, sort of uh, Mura-esque in, in, its, in its style, but I don't remember this seam or this crease. I don't yeah. know if I'm making that up or not. But I think they all have that. I guess they, I guess they did. I just didn't get up on it. And it's just to make enough. it for separate pieces to replace them. Well, I don't know. I yeah, mean, probably I have one seen, piece of metal to to, to mold like we'll, this. We'll yeah. look it up. Yeah, it I could be that. I've seen the whole the clip yeah. done before, but uh, either way, triple Weber's one of the uh, prettiest engines ever. Even though it's a straight six. 
the cams are so far apart. Yeah. And the casting of the aluminum and the fins and that Beautiful thing. crazy gold color that they would just use yeah. in there, mixed with the triple side draft Weber's, mixed with sometimes some really cool air boxes and, mm -hmm. and induction systems, just made. And yeah. and the thing and a long engine, with and, long, and, so it has and 3.8s and 4.2s and and like you, you know you don't think of the hot rotted straight configuration six that often but these especially the 4.2s i mean these things were hot rods i mean they put out tons of torque tons Three, of power, 350 horsepower and and in a really lightweight yeah and car. this is this is lightweight trunk light this you know um, aluminum trunk aluminum top aluminum hood doors i mean you can see that you know just you can see how light that is yeah so, yeah you really nothing. uh everybody owes it to themselves to uh, make it out to Goodwood uh, at least once. And again, the, the hill climb is fun if you just want to drink some beers and watch some guys like Hemi under glass doing a wheelie down the straightaway <laughs> <laughs> or some guy in an F1 car. Catch. The greatest thing about the hill climb is guys show off, you know, which is fine. They do donuts and then burnouts and stuff. But as soon as one tire catches one square foot of sod, they're off. Like yeah, yeah. you go from on to off immediately. Like when they hit that grass, it's they, the rear hand just whoosh, <laughs> like right around. So they go yeah. from like, hey ma, look at me, no hands to whoosh, into, yeah, the, no into hands. the hay bales <laughs> in just a second. And the only thing worse than doing that is doing it in front of 150,000 people that are watching you destroy this super cool car. But I yeah. literally saw Hemi under glass wheeling in front of the grandstands, yeah, literally wheeling and looking through the piece of glass or Lexan or whatever he has where transmission should be. That's how he steers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's thing. how. And the people love it. Oh, they, they go nuts. But if you're a hardcore enthusiast, go to the go to the historic races and watch the guys drive these cars, the like, like the revival. Like I don't think you will see them driven anywhere else in the world. The English, you know, I get a kick out of the English. You know, they're so polite. And they're, you know, they come in, no, no, you go first. No, you go first. I mean, everything's like so done, so civil. Put the English on a race course or in a soccer match or anything competitive. Yeah. You better be on your game. And I'll tell you, they drive these cars in anger. And they'll take the Le Mans winning Aston Martin worth probably $30 million, and they will drive it like it's a Mazda, you know, uh, spec racer. Uh, I, and, <laughs> I mean, and, and, and especially if it's not yours. It'll be funny because yeah. it, it'll be drizzling outside with their 70 series bias ply tires on it, and these guys are just sideways. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, They're oh, such good drivers and so enthusiastic and so competitive. I've told you before, Ferrari 250 LM, Guy did a lot of damage to the front end of that aluminum bodied car, put duct tape on it, was out for the second race, yeah. and then totaled it. <laughs> yeah. Finish it off. Well, yeah. you'll never total it, because as long yeah, as there's like, a sandbag and an English wheel, it's coming, it's coming back. <laughs> it's coming that's why they named much. it the English wheel, because they pent up so much sheet metal. That's funny. Uh, Bruce, I feel like we could spend another hour here or we could just come back in six months and you could show us all the bikes this time, maybe. You're always welcome back, Adam. Uh, it's, it's, a treat. it's a treat. <laughs> you can hang I'm out and Adam will be back. <laughs> um, but it's a treat because you are such, you know, the enthusiast, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. and, and so, you know. I got to tell you, what I was doing two hours ago was I had Paul Newman's 88 300ZX championship car up on jack stands and i was hitting that big big knockoff nut that hadn't come off in a with long while with the gun just <laughs> hoping it doesn't jump off the got jack it stands. off got it up on its thing and it's it's going to uh, laguna seca for uh oh, for the, the track day coming up in uh, oh, january oh you're gonna be there yeah i'm not yeah. sure what if i'm gonna take a car because there's a motorcycle auction right after it but i'm i'll be up there I'll, on gonna, the 10th or something <clears throat> on the um january yeah. 10th 11th or yeah, 11th, yeah. 12th. 10th or 11th yeah uh, bring Car Clark Gable's car, because I want someone I can beat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring any of the fast stuff. Yeah. But all right, so you'll be up there. So yeah. me, yeah. you, yeah. and Bruce, and yeah. everyone named Bruce are going to hang That's out right. and uh, yep. toast the good life. All yeah. right, so until next time. And Bruce Meyer, do you have a charity or any uh, website or something like that you want to toss out? No, 
I mean, well, are the Peterson Automotive Museum. Yeah, I would say the Peterson that. Automotive Museum. If you and ever want to see any of these cars in person, you do often put them yeah. there. Yeah, and the you've got to see there these there things in person because yeah. these cars yeah. are amazing. Yeah. And, and my other favorite charity is the California Highway Patrol, the 1199 Foundation, CHP 1199 Foundation. We have our own website. Both of them do. So if you're feeling generous and you want to throw a few dollars, they can in, use in, it. In, you know. Adam's way, and if you're not going to send it to Adam, send it to those two. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be on the track with the rich white guys. So until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Bruce Meyer, Matt DeAndre, Matt DeAndre, Matt the moderator, DeAndrea saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel.